Got the side deck platforms built, or roughly built. Um, they kind of rest inside the beams here on another strip. Like this. And then you kind of have to like make some openings for the lashing to go through, which I'll kind of do as I go. And then I've added two supports in the middle. And then on each side here and on the cabin side, they'll get a, a block that the whole thing uh, rests on. And I've got this pretty hefty block of teak. I, I think it's teak. But so I'm gonna cut it some like one inch uh, blocks and then get this all leveled out nicely. And then I've, I gotta cut those to this, to that angle to get these to rest flat on there. I uh, got one by fours, one, two, three, four, five of them. And then I, I had to use a one by six for this one to, in order to, um, to fill this gap. Because if I, if I just put the one by four in here, there'd be these little slivers at the ends with nothing to attach to. So I used a one by six there and then I, I scribed that curve of the uh, cabin side into the edge there on both sides here. And came out pretty good. Not perfect, but um, I think it'll do the job pretty good. And then I'm gonna, I got a few different um, uh, stain samples to see which, which one I wanna go for. Here's the three stain samples I got. It's a uh, penafin, it's like a penetrating oil stain sealer for like decks and whatnot. I think it'd be pretty good at um, protecting this wood a little bit. Um, it's kind of hard to tell the difference in these lighter colors, pretty subtle. But um, either thinking the redwood or the spark is kind of matches the um, the marine ply that I've got left right here. So this is pretty momentous that I can actually stand up and walk around on the deck. Look at that. So I got the uh, little support blocks uh, located and uh, pre-drilled. So now I just got to glue them on. So I didn't get as much done today as I thought I would. Um, I uh, spent most of the day getting these um, beam or the uh, deck support blocks uh, screwed and glued on, and just locating them, and then pre-drilling, gluing test fitting the deck, it just took longer than I expected, but they're on there now and I think they look pretty good. But then uh, here at the end of the day, I got the uh, mask going a little bit, um, drilled out the rest of my mounting holes. Okay, so today was kind of like a coating day on a bunch of different things. Um, kind of starting to 
get the masts finished up. I uh, primed and coated like the two, about two feet on each end of the mast. So here's the head. I did same as that, about two feet, just to kind of protect the aluminum a little bit and so it'll just kind of look a little bit classier when the sails are on it at least. You won't really be able to see this raw aluminum. Um, and then I got the mast inserts primed and painted. Uh, may do one more coat, but I used nice, um, I had a little bit of uh, Interlux um, epoxy primer two part. Uh, left, so I had enough to do this little project. Got a nice coat on there. I think those will look pretty classy. And then I also, um, while I'm in here, I'll show you, got these drilled out. I kind of need to clean that up a little bit. But, um, and then I, I uh, drilled and got these shock cord loops on the tillers here that uh, lock the tiller bar on here. Another kind of major thing, we uh, stained the deck that I just made, the, the deck sides. Um, I decided to go with the cedar color. It's this um, Penafin, really high quality oil-based finish, and I barely used any of it, so this is gonna last me a lifetime and I can keep keep coating this thing and try to keep it going. I know it's like it's like a little slap together but with kind of cheap wood, but I think it looks pretty good and it'll I think it'll kind of go with the whole vibe of the boat and as it as it kind of grays out a little bit, I think it'll look pretty cool. Kind of kind of classic uh Polynesian style. But I I think that cedar ended up pretty good you guys you guys voted and i think cedar came out ahead and i'm kind of happy with it it's got it's got a bit of a yellow tinge to it so it so it goes well with the boat and on this uh i had to do a little surgery on this uh on the rudder here the the tiller on this side for some reason was sitting like way higher than the other side so i was able to um Actually, what I did was kind of, I ground these off at at an angle, and then I I flipped them so it so it reversed the uh, the angle of this uh, block here. So now it sits perfectly, and I I really didn't do. I just kind of glued it on there, and and then just slapped some paint over it, and it actually looks really good. You can't even you can't even really tell I did anything to it. Um, and now it now it sits really nice and even with the other one. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Okay, I decided to do a test fit on the outboard here because I remembered that I hadn't really done that very much. I just kind of did like a bench test but when I built this thing. And before I did any more uh, finish work on this, I wanted to test fit this to make sure I didn't have to, to um, do any more uh, modification or anything. And I think there's a couple little issues, maybe nothing serious, but stuff that might get a little annoying, but uh, I'll kind of show you what's going on. For one, for one, this outboard's got the um, release for the tilt is kind of weird. I don't know if it's missing a spring or something. I have to reach down here and and pull that up in order to, to tilt the motor forward. Um, so there's that. And then I, was, I'm trying to get this so it'll lock lock in the forward position and I, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. I, I put a block here to try to move the whole motor back to give a little bit more room here, but it's still not quite enough. So when I release this, this will tip forward. Sorry, I lost the clamp there. 
um, and I can get it to I can get it to go pretty far. This kind of starts um, hitting the deck here, but I guess that's not a big deal. So and it's it's just not going forward enough for the the little um, clip to lock into the um, the little groove there to where to hold it up. And I don't want to move this whole forward anymore. I mean, I guess I I guess I'd I'd have to cut I'd have to cut like another notch out of here, which would kind of screw up a lot of stuff. So I'm not sure I want to do that um, just yet. And even if I did, um, I'll show you here. Even if I did, the back, the shaft of the motor is going to hit the rear beam before that'll even go down any further. So what I've done is I've got one of these bow, these rubber bow um, cradle things. And um, I was thinking I'd maybe attach that to the beam somehow, either like maybe lash it on there or glue it or something. I don't want to drill any more holes in the beam than I have to. But that'll kind of act as a bumper for the outboard and just kind of keep it from hitting the deck up there and just kind of lock it lock it in place where it needs to be and I think that's that's up far enough and then so I'm thinking I'm just gonna have I had a I had a little um cam cleat clamped on here but I lost it but so I was thinking maybe I'd I'd just put a some kind of a cleat on there or somewhere along here so, so this you just cleat it in there and then that that holds the motor in the up position so i don't know if this having that rope attached like that's a good or bad idea got it tight enough to where it it can't really come off but um so then you could you could just release the cleat i think i have an idea of what's going on with the tilt lock thing um i know these have a safety feature when you when you put this in reverse um it locks it in so the motor doesn't flip up going in reverse but it i feel like it should it should in neutral lift this up so you're able to lift the motor up in neutral which it's not doing it's only when you when you put it in drive it lifts up which i'm i think is also a safety feature if you hit um if you hit something it won't um it'll it'll flip up but I feel like like maybe this is in neutral. It's not this um, actuator is not lifting this up enough. So I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to play around with this a little bit because in drive it, you're able to flip it up. Another thing I was I just noticed might be an option is. Um, to, so you can see here, I'm, I'm just not, I'd have to get it, this, this up to that upper slot in order to get this to lock in in that far up position, which it's never going to do, um, with this beam in here and the, it hitting the deck up here, like I showed you a minute ago, but I was thinking maybe I could, um, kind of grind out another little slot here or, or put in a, like JB Weld, like a little, another little hump right there to mimic that. So it, it, it would have another rest there in that position where it would need to be. So that, that might be an option as well. All right, I'm inside the cabin here and I ground off all the little excess threads for my port windows here and put these brass acorn nuts on. You can see it, that's, that's how they looked before. And uh, I guess I gotta trim those ones too. I forgot those were there on those hatches. But I might hold off on finishing that job because it's not absolutely necessary to launch the boat. Uh, next week, 
Um, I'm going to be working on finishing up the mast. Uh, the weather's been kind of bad, so I haven't really been able to do any more painting or anything like that. And I want to make sure everything's nice and dry before I install. So I'm going to get those inserts put in there um, and mounted. And then hopefully maybe do a dry run of raising the mast. And I'm going to start getting some of the rigging. So maybe start with the, the rigging on the, the mast. Um, I've got a uh, couple ideas for the, uh, the way I'm going to run the halyards. Um, <clears throat> so I might, might start on that. And maybe, maybe a little bit of... Uh, sorry, it's crazy windy here today. Um, maybe a little bit of the, uh, some of the running rigging. I've got a couple things already kind of in motion. The uh, main sheet lead uh, might might do a dry fit of the traveler. Um, I've got I've kind of got that all planned. I, you know, it's stuff that I've been thinking about for years now. And then I'm just hoping maybe uh, maybe in like maybe next month. I'm thinking. I'll try to launch. There's a couple spots I'm thinking about around here that should be pretty mellow. Um, one of them would be down on the Snake River. M might head up to maybe Lake Pondere, Cor Lake Coeur d'Alene. Um, there's, you know, there's a fair amount of options. And then uh, hope to do a lot of shakedown and then, and then hopefully get out to like Puget Sound area, do some of that. And then I might, I'll probably be going back down to San Diego uh, at some point this summer and hope to bring the boat down there and do some sailing down there. Um, really want to get out to Catalina at some point, do the Channel Islands um, and some more uh, Southern California stuff when I can. Uh, but hopefully my trailer's good for long distances. Eh, we'll see. But uh, stay tuned, and hopefully I'll have some more content for you. So thanks for watching.